The building that I call my workshop is an 8x10 roll-off shed. These are the same kind of shed that you see in the Lowe's and Home Depot parking lots. They make them in a factory, they bring them out on a truck and roll them off on the ground, and there you have a shed. They really are a great option if you're renting or if you just don't have the money or the time to fool with building a foundation, pouring a slab, and stuck building a shed from scratch. A common issue with these buildings is that, as with any building with plywood sides, when the water hits the side of the siding and runs down, it ends up hanging on the bottom edge and slowly wicking up into the plywood and eventually rotting it away. So this is occurring on all sides of the shed, but the back side that never gets any sun or breeze is where it's the worst. So to replace this patch, I'm going to start by cutting an access hole within the area that I know I'm going to replace. And I'm going to do this to really get a solid location on where the studs are. I can get a general location just by looking at where the nails are placed from the outside, but I want my patch to land right in the middle of a stud. So I'm going to cut this hole so I can measure to the middle of the studs and cut an exact 48 inch patch. The damage seems to extend 12 to 14 inches up from the bottom, so I made my patch 18 inches tall to make sure I covered everything. Now, because I'm working by myself, I had to get a little creative with how to draw that straight line 18 inches up. I have a four foot straight edge, and so I drilled two screws into the siding uh, and dropped those screws down to account for the width of the straight edge. That allows me to set the straight edge right on those screws and draw a straight line across the top. Another option to make this mark may be to use a chalk line. However, with the roughness of the texture of this siding, I'm not sure that a chalk line would have made a clear mark. And I want to make the clearest mark possible to give myself the best chance of making a straight cut. With those two screws removed, it's time to make that cut. Now I didn't mention before, but now is a really important time to make sure that the blade on your saw is set no deeper than the thickness of the wood that you're cutting. It's okay to go just a hair deeper, like maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so, but you don't want to cut too much into the studs that the plywood is nailed to. I then made my two end cuts, which were pretty quick and rough, and I made those cuts a few inches in from where the final edge is going to be. I did that because I really didn't know how difficult it would be to remove this panel I didn't want to cause any collateral damage to the final edge cut. It's worth noting that anytime you make a cut with a circular saw and two of those cuts meet, there oftentimes is a small web of wood left in right where the two joints meet. Now one solution is to cut past the point that you actually need to with the circular saw, but in this case that would leave me with a cut in my good siding that I don't intend to replace. So instead I cut just so the joints meet and then use a sawzall to finish off that cut. Well I finished tearing off this piece of siding. If you're the kind of person that enjoys learning how stuff works and how to fix it when it doesn't work, go ahead and hit subscribe and tap that bell. You'll be glad you did. Now for this part of the demolition, really anything goes. Within reason. You don't want to damage the wood that you're intending to save. I was able to go in a little bit and knock some of this off from the inside. Unfortunately, I've got those shelves permanently installed on the inside, so I don't have a lot of room to swing a hammer. Now, this siding is just held on with nails, so theoretically it should come off pretty easily, but it's putting up a pretty good fight. One technique I found useful is to kind of work the siding back and forth, and that helps loosen up the nails, and then you can get a hold of the nails with the claw of the hammer or with your wonder bar. Most of the nails pulled out fairly easily. I did have a few, however, that were rusted enough that when I pried on them, the heads just popped right off. To get around this, I used my vice grips and gripped on to the shank of the nail, leaving just enough space to get my claw between the wood and the nose of the vice grips and just pried them right out. With the bulk of the rough demolition complete, I'm ready to make that final precise edge cut that I was avoiding earlier in the process. With that cut made, that last little tab pulls out fairly easily. I 
Again, remember if you're doing this for yourself, it's important to note that because you're cutting right on the stud, there should be some nails in the path of the saw. So before you make that cut, it's important to get all those nails out of the way. It was at this point that I realized that the demolition is not quite done. When I got that siding off, I realized that the main band board that the bottom of all the siding is nailed to was rotten away in this area. And typically rot begets more rot, so I want to get at least as much as I can reasonably out of there. So I reached underneath and felt where the main cross members were coming across that that band board is nailed to, and I used my sawzall to cut right along the edge of where that band board sticks out. Because I cut that old rotten band board right at the edge of the cross members underneath, I don't have anything to secure the new band board to. So I cut some 12 inch long pieces of 2x4 and hammered them in place and sistered them to the existing 2x4 cross members. As I was hammering them in, I was being careful not to go too far because there's no real good way to hammer them back out if I hammer them too far in. With the rough opening finished now, I grab my replacement piece of plywood and test fit it in place. I was sure to cut this piece about a quarter inch shorter than the rough opening, and I'll explain why in a minute. A key component to making this installation last as long as possible is a piece of bent sheet metal called Z-channel. The purpose of the Z-channel is to prevent water from puddling on the top edge of our new plywood. Looking at the end of a piece of this Z channel, you can see exactly where it gets its name from the distinctive letter Z made by the combination of bends. After cutting the Z channel to length, I smoothed out the edge where I made the cut and then test fit it in place. So at this point, it was time for some pre-assembly painting. I had about a quart left in this old gallon of exterior kind of blue-gray paint, and because it's on the back of the shed, I'm not really worried about color matching it to the white on the rest of the shed. I started by painting all the edges on the replacement piece of plywood as well as about a two inch border all the way around on both sides of the plywood. I then went back over to the shed and put a quick coat on everything that's going to be covered by the plywood. Anywhere where two pieces of wood come together that often creates a gap that can wick moisture up and so we want to cover all those surfaces with paint. I gave the paint about an hour to dry, at which point it was still pretty tacky but able to be handled. So at this point I can go ahead and assemble everything. Of course I'll start by slipping that Z channel, the long leg of that Z channel that is, up behind the old siding. Before lifting the replacement piece of plywood in place, I started two screws in so that when I get it in place I can screw it right in before I lose the placement. When you're securing this new piece, uh, plywood into place, you want to make sure and leave a gap between it and the Z channel above it. That's because if you secure this new piece right up to the Z channel, right up to the upper piece of plywood, you're going to create a gap there and an opportunity for water to puddle. So leave that down about 3 16 or a quarter of an inch. Be sure to put a few screws in the top pre-existing piece of plywood and put them low enough so that they catch the lip of that Z-channel and hold it in place. Now all that's left to do is give everything one final coat of paint. Until next time, keep learning and we'll see you guys back for the next project.